Nancy Lee's here of Bowman Lighter with a whole new Teen Book Spotlight. So for this week, we are taking inspiration in a writing event that takes place throughout the month of November, which is starting this week, believe it or not. How crazy is it that it's already November? We are taking a look at some books that are kind of Rhymo, like Nammo Rhymo inspired. And here's why I say that, they're how they're inspired. We are taking a look at some books this week that the main characters are authors in their own rights. Because NaNoWriMo, what it encourages you to do is it encourages you to, to write your own story, to write a certain amount of words, depending on which level you choose to do in the month of November. And there have been some amazing novels that have been published that have come out of NaNoWriMo. So to kind of give you some inspiration, some encouragement, the books we're gonna take a look at today, the main characters are writers in their own way. To show that if they can, you can do it too. So let's get started with these six amazing titles. Our first one is Between the Lines. So all Darian has ever wanted to do, what he's grown up, he's, a, he's, a, he's in high school now, he's a senior, he just wants to be a star journalist and a reporter. So naturally after talking to his school librarian, he decides that he's going to join a poetry class at his high school. This way it'll help him not only write better, but it'll also help him understand people better. So little does he know that this class is going to change his life. As his classmates start to open up, as they're writing their poetry, they start to open up about what is going on in their lives. Like for example, out of the, out of the group of nine, the nine students, one is, uh, one is in foster care while another is dealing with a parent who has, who is just coming out of jail. There's, there's an individual who is dealing with some, with some pretty severe heart issues. All nine students have their unique story to share, including Darian. And you will be along this journey as they write and then they read their poetry out loud. This amazing story will have you looking at people through different eyes. You know what? Everyone is going through something. Yeah, you know, we need to be there for each other. It is told like their poems that they write are actually in the story. An amazing, uh, yeah, amazing journey. This is between the lines. Fangirl. So Kat is entering her first year of college and things start to fall apart right from the start when her twin sister Ren informs her that she doesn't want to be roommates with her and basically leaves her at the door to their dorm. So Kat, you know, she is different from her sister Ren. Kat prefers to spend her time locked away in her room writing her Simon Snow inspired fan fiction instead of out partying with her sister and new roommate. But she slowly started she slowly started to be pushed out of her comfort zone by her roommate as well as her roommate's ex-boyfriend. And Kath starts to find herself becoming a different person, all while trying to hold her family together. And she's expressing herself through her fan fiction, which starts to get quite a little following. This incredibly realistic book is one that everyone can relate to at some point. It will have you laughing, you'll be crying, you'll be cringing, every other emotion in between. If you love the Simon Snow books, which is written by the same author, Ray Rob Raw, you will love this one as well. This is Fangirl. Sweet Scarlet. So Scarlet's family owns and lives in this Art Deco hotel in New York City which lends itself to some unique living situations and different circumstances and traditions for most families. Now, Scarlett's family may have been doing too hot financially over the past couple of years, not only with the hotel, but her mom's also been struggling with cancer, which has kind of eaten away at her savings, which makes what happens when they turn 15 even that much more unique. And that's when you turn 15 in her family, you were gifted a suite, you know, a hotel room to take care of. And not only are you taking care of this hotel room, but you're also taking care of the person who is residing in this room. And a lot of the people who are in this hotel, they're there for the long haul. So when Scarlett is gifted the Empire Suite, along with its occupant, Amy Amberson, who is there for the summer, Scarlett quickly realizes that Amy is she's a tough and needy individual, but she decides not only is Scarlett going to help take care of her, but Scarlett's going to become her personal assistant, which includes helping her write her long-awaited memoir that she's been dying to write. As they start to work together throughout the summer, Scarlett starts to grow as an individual. She becomes her own person, especially when Amy often disappears and leaves things unfinished and upside down. If you love humorous, realistic stories filled with family, there is a bit of romance and some summer fun, 
This one's for you. This is Sweet Scarlet. Afterworld, and I will tell you, it is a thick one. It's got Westerfeld, but you know it's going to be awesome. So just bear with me here, okay? So Darcy has just graduated from high school, and instead of going off to college, which was the plan, she decides she's going to instead move to New York City all by herself, and she's going to edit this book that has just been picked up by this major publishing house. They've given her a pretty, pretty big check. She's going to edit the book, get it there, set it down for publication. She's going to start working on the sequel. It is then that we get this story about that Darcy that we meet our other character, Lizzie. And Lizzie is like, when we, when we first are introduced to her, she's at this airport in Dallas. She's returning from overseas from visiting her father. She's at this airport in Dallas to, to change planes when a horrific terrorist attack occurs. And she finds that she is, she's injured. She is shot during this attack and she, and she is hovering between life and death. And she, she ends up visiting the afterworld where she is met with young Raja, who is there to guide her back to life. Now, both of these stories, Darcy's and Lily, or Lizzie's, are told in alternating uh, chapters and perspectives. So you will get both of their stories, but I will tell you this. I can tell you this, I can promise you this. There is quite the twist that will happen in a story. So you have been warned, just be prepared. Now this is filled with Hindu legends and mythology. There's some realism, there's some fast paced writing. And even though the book looks pretty hefty, it's over 600 pages, okay? So I will be completely honest with you. It's a hefty read. The book is pretty heavy. But you'll be turning the pages as fast as you possibly can because you will want to know what happens with Darcy and Lizzie and their stories and yeah, like, and you know it's gonna be awesome if you've read anything by Scott Westerfeld. He's the one who did the um the Ugly series, Leviathan, like Spill Zone. Like you know you're in for a treat. This is Afterworld. Downstairs girl, amazing. I will tell you that right now. So Chinese American Joe, she's living in Atlanta. It's 1880, and she's a living a double life. During the day, she has a real job. She starts as a milliner, which is someone who makes hats for women, but she's fired that because of her heritage, because of the fact that she's Chinese. But then she becomes a lady maid. That's going to be her next job. But in the evening, that is when she is the secret author to one of the hottest advice columns in all of Atlanta, and she is known as Miss Sweetie. That's her pseudonym. No one knows it's really her. So it's the column that Joe shares her opinions, many of which are considered to be extremely controversial and ahead of their time. But she knows if she's ever found out, she's going to be severely punished. Hence, Miss Sweetie. There is so much to this book. There's history, there's mystery, there's a slap you in your face moment. I was not, I did not see it coming. There's horse racing, so if you love horses, that plays a huge part. I love this book, highly recommend it. Yeah, if you even if you don't love historical fiction, yeah, stay silly. The author she's written some other fantastic books as well. This is downstairs girl, and so our last one for today is Eliza and her monster. So Eliza is a high school senior who seems to be socially inept and basically invisible, but she does have a secret. That's a pretty that's a pretty intense secret. Only her family knows about it, and this she has another identity. Because when she is online, she is known as Lady Constellation. And why is this important? Oh, because she is the creator of this viral web comic that is uber popular called Monstrousy. Like people cannot get enough of it. There's even like, you know, there's money coming in, all different things. But Eliza struggles with anxiety and depression. And for those reasons, she doesn't want people to know who she is. She's, she's good living how she is, being a secret. She doesn't want people coming up to her. She doesn't want to have to go do public appearances. She's good just keeping her, her identity, this anonymous, you know, miss, like Lady Constellation. Things start to change though when she meets this new student at her school whose name is Wallace. Wallace is obsessed with monstrosity, including writing his own fan fiction about this web comic. Now, he becomes her friend at school, but he does not know who Eliza really is. As the two start to become closer, Eliza then starts to spiral when her secret is outed. This realistic look on how anxiety and depression can impact an individual is finding what your passion is 
going to be in life to help keep you going. Like Eliza, it's her, it's her webcomic, it's her writing. Yeah, I, I loved this one. If you love a good realistic read, Eliza and her monsters. So these were just six books that we have here at the library that are have characters who are writing to give you inspiration, maybe in your writing journey or, or maybe even finding a passion. Maybe it's not writing, but maybe help you discover another passion that's completely different. So encourage you to come on out. Check out one of these, or we have others. We can help you find others. Or maybe again, if you're not passionate about writing, but you want to be your passion with something else, I'm, I'm sure we have books that we can point you in the right direction for. So I hope you have an amazing week, and I hope you tune back next week. We have a whole new team book spotlight.